What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to a combo edition here. We got a pay-per-view point of NXT Worlds Collide, and we got the episode number 561 of the Hot Tags. The Smart Out Moment Smack Talk podcast is doubling it up this week. I am your host, as always, Tony Mango. Joining me, as always, are Robert E. Felice. This wasn't the combo I ordered. Well, this one comes with fries. And Callum Wiggins. Where's my fries? They're uh, the chips. Oh, we have fries. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you use that again? <laughs> it's Worlds Collide. The uh, Americans against the United Kingdom. So uh, both Rob and I are going to double team and gang up on you and beat you up on this podcast. That's what it's going to be. Oh, that's, that, that sounds like the American way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jesus. <laughs> I shouldn't have tried to drink water. <laughs> yeah, so what we're doing here is we're going to run down our preview content for Worlds Collide, the NXT event that's going to be sandwiched between Clash the Castle and All Out. Normally, we would do a separate pay-per-view point, but the fact that there are three events this week kind of seemed like it made more sense to just combine this with the hot tags, especially because there's only like five matches. So, you know, it'd just be a shorter edition anyway. And we're also going to run down those hot tags of the week, you know, whatever the major stories and news and gossip and everything that's happened in this world of pro wrestling that we follow and that we feel like talking about and everything. We got lots to talk about actually. And as we go along here, we want to know what you have to say. So drop a comment below, do the usual thing, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring that notification bell, hit the thanks button. If you want to pass off a little bit of fair change our way, we'll talk more about that a little bit later on, but just make sure that you are shouting out what your thoughts are. And we should just kind of get started with the hot tags. I think, cause like I said, we got a lot to talk about. So, um, I usually like starting off with this kind of <laughs> trademark type news. I got two stories. One of them being the Austin Theory, Matt Riddle, Tommaso Ciampa first names thing. Tommaso Ciampa, they haven't yet, but it seems Austin Theory and Matt Riddle are definitely going to be not just Theory and Riddle anymore. Ciampa, at least on NXT, they still had the graphic as just Ciampa, but maybe that's just kind of an oversight. And I think that this is one of those things where we just all very much agree yeah obviously they should have done this because it was stupid to begin with i think triple h says it best when he's talking to ariel hawani if you want to present a hyper realistic product or at least try to get there if the guy has a first name and it's just matt riddle then just call him matt riddle first name's there yeah like what really is the negative i know vince of course supposedly his argument was uh well you know if they use part of their name then they can use it on the indies who fucking cares they're not a part of your company anymore at that point is that really going to like do you need to sabotage them in that way people are still going to follow them how many people have gone to the indies and they've done some kind of name variation that has nothing at all close to what they had been in wwe and they were perfectly fine you know and then, of course, you get other people yeah. like Chris Masters, who ended up being Chris Master. <laughs> Luke Gallows was Luke Gallo for a little bit there. I thought that was always funny. Just take the ass off. <laughs> yeah, it's good that they have, like, actual human names now, rather <laughs> than a guy holding in one in bank briefcase who's just called Fero. It's, um, I always just believe that even with the, like, the actual answer that than seemingly would give to these to that approach i generally think the main reason was because he couldn't remember two names <laughs> and so it was just easier for him to just say riddle or theory and just remember one name and at his age was probably the um easier approach. i think some people would agree with that actually there was the really weird stuff of like well wait, if google matt riddle they'll find his legal troubles but if they just google <laughs> riddle they'll find children's <laughs> things or riddles like I, I understand like what that was always going to be there was there was like some over the top but maybe justified stuff like when that nick cruz school shooting happened and they were like oh we can't call him cruz now i, I think that's ridiculous mm -hmm. but at least you can kind of see an over dramatic realization for that but like riddle and theory were just two names that should not be one name people because yeah, be you could at least argue that maybe something like Champa 
could be like Goldberg, where it might just be like catchy enough, I guess. But Theory and Riddle, it kind of makes you think, all right, well, they're both on Raw. Are we just going to kind of continue this and we're going to have like Clue and Hypothesis and <laughs> different things that mean the same sort of idea? You know, it's kind of, it's silly because it's like, I don't want to see the WrestleMania main event marquee being Theory versus whatever. That makes no sense. It looks stupid as all hell. So I'm glad that that's one of the many things that Triple H has been like, that's dumb. We can say wrestling. We can use the word belt. Things are what they are, and we can all just relax a little bit. But another trademark related thing, though, I thought that this was really funny. John Wayne Enterprises is filing an opposition trademark for how WWE has the very little used <laughs> Duke's Poker Room trademark. So if you don't remember, which I don't blame you, Duke Hudson, for like three weeks, was a poker player. His whole gimmick was, I'm like an ace poker player. I can uh, like see all the angles and whatever, which is like the some running theme in NXT is, you've got this skill, and that allows you to be really great at pro wrestling, like Axiom with the math stuff. And they had Duke's poker room was just like some little backstage vignettes. Very quickly, they did this feud with Cameron Grimes, and he got his head shaved and disappeared and came back and everything was just, uh, we're not going to talk about that anymore. They haven't used the Duke's Poker Room trademark in I don't remember how many months. And right now, John Wayne Enterprises is trying to argue, this is what I think is funny as all hell, that that is going to be too confusing for people that might get that mixed up with how John Wayne had the nickname The Duke and played poker sometimes in some of his movies. <laughs> they, they honestly are trying to argue that WWE I, is I trying that. to tap sorry, into the John that. Wayne fucking... <laughs> I love it. WWE would do the same thing. They're being hyper-protective of their uh, IP, and I, I think it's, it's funny to me. I'm just curious if John Wayne Enterprises is doing that with everything else Duke-related. Like, are they trying to get the Duke Nukem games taken away? Because they're like, ah, oh, yeah, people might get that confused with that John Wayne stuff. <laughs> I bet, like... Oh, you should have seen the storm when Duke Josie came yeah, out. Yeah, the so. dumpster. I mean, he, he must have thrown out trash at some point in his life, right? <laughs> so, like, are you calling John Wayne trash? In a way, yeah. <laughs> I think John Wayne sucks. I've never liked any John Wayne thing that I've seen. He's, All right, Pilgrim. Ugh. It's part of that generation of, uh, I'm so glad I didn't grow up back then. That's the real, like, boomer, boomer stuff. John Wayne's one of those guys that, yeah, if you are a big fan of him, you either are showing your age or you're showing that you're one of those hipster people that's just kind of like, oh, there hasn't been a good movie made since 1958 or whatever. <laughs> the herders. But uh, I, I think that this is hilarious because it's like, I saw a thing on TikTok the other day where it was uh, this person was asking their teenage daughter questions from the 90s. And it was things like, what does be kind rewind mean? And the girl was like, doesn't that just mean like to be kind in general or whatever? And she's like, all right, what it's blockbuster. And she's like, that's a video game, right? And uh, what's a dial up call or whatever? Or what's a collect call? And she's like, I, I don't know. And it was all this thing said, it's like, all right, well, you know, yeah, if you didn't grow up in the 90s, you know, somebody who grew up from 2000 is 22 years old now, they don't have the context for those things as much. You mean to tell me that kids these days know who fucking John Wayne is? No, they don't. <laughs> they can't tell you who the president before Barack Obama was. So it's just like, I, I love it. Are you just trying to make us feel old? Like, that's, that's pretty bad. <laughs> but it's like the John Wayne people just being like, no, these kids are going to watch this NXT thing that hasn't been on there. And they're going to think that that's a John Wayne thing. <laughs> like, get over yourselves. Well, 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 considering the fact that NXT's median range of ages is about 67 or 68, then I actually think there would be a reason why they might be uh, uh, going against NXT for this. I think I would look at it this way. If anybody is that untouched with reality that they would look at the thing from a few months ago of Duke Hudson's poker room and be like, 
oh, this is definitely a John Wayne thing. This parody of this or whatever is is really speaking to me, and I think I'm going to toss money towards that. I don't think you can play to the lowest common denominator. I think those people are just, they're living in their own world. So I, I think that this is one example of WWE is not even using the Duke's poker room thing. So either this is going to be one of those things that they get their trademark lawyers to just be like, your honor, this is fucking stupid. And then he goes, yeah. <laughs> and then it gets dismissed or they go, yeah, just fucking take the trademark. Then we don't care because we're not using it. It's not going to use anything useful for two cutscenes. He's not going back to that character. So whatever. But I thought that was hilarious. I wanted to talk about that just because, yeah, good little crossover with something that's not even going to ever pop up on Fanboys Anonymous because we're never going to talk about John Wayne again, I think. Um, (laughs) Speaking of NXT, uh, let's talk about Velveteen Dream. (laughs) So over the past week, there was this hashtag of bring back Velveteen Dream. And then he got arrested. And... There is more reports that, yeah, he is never coming back for obvious reasons. And that's just made worse and worse and worse as time goes on. Now, I have not followed the arrest story to a T, but correct me if I'm wrong here. He had gotten arrested for having drugs on him and doing them in front of a cop. So, oh God. So let's, let's back up here because the first story that came out was Velveteen Dream was arrested on the 26th of August for possession of drug paraphernalia. However, after some digging, it was revealed Velveteen Dream was also arrested on August 21st for, I think it was that, uh, maybe an assault and battery charge and a trespassing charge on that. And he got arrested twice in one week. And according to the um, report on the second arrest. Yeah, he just uh, he took out a white powdery substance in front of the cop and uh, put in a line formation, and you know he got arrested. Imagine that. But yeah, it looks like Velveteen Dream will never come back. And at this point, who cares? We don't need to talk about him really. Yeah, it's. I guess um, it's just. Surprise! I guess it's not surprising. There are a lot of people that are still on the Velveteen Dream bad wagon because he did a, a year of good stuff, a year and maybe a year and a bit of good stuff in NXT, and then everything just fell apart, like both personally and professionally. So I think that this is the final nail in the coffin, as if there ever was any other real possibility of him ever coming back, which seems like it was minimal anyway. Just a lot of people desperately hoping that he could potentially fulfill that promise that we all saw in him back in 2018, 2019. Mm -hmm. And yeah, now he's seemingly in a bit of a a downward spiral, which hopefully he is able to get the help and support that he needs in order to like get out of that funk or, and just be able to live as normal a life as he can. But yeah, or if he continues to do this thing, probably go to jail. That seems to be the, worse. the other option that he's got at the moment. Yeah, or worse. Yeah, or definitely or worse. But that seems to be the options that he's playing with at the moment. And yeah, but I think it's safe to say that we, well, hopefully we don't have to bring him up too much because I think any time we would have to bring him up, it would just be in this sort of context, which isn't, which wouldn't be a fun thing to do. Yeah, I mean, the at least for my point of view. Uh, I definitely agree with that. Like, I would hope the next story that we would bring up about Velveteen Dream is that he is getting the help that he needs, because clearly that is a thing. And then that's just sort of the sunset on this story is, you know, a positive thing. But I don't want to keep having the sunny discussions, and I don't want to keep having the same, you know, okay, this person gets arrested again and again and again and again. It, there's clearly problems here, and Velveteen Dream is well past the point of maybe a return. It's not happening. There's no way it's happening at this point. So that's a shame because he did have a lot of promise and a lot of potential. He was somebody who could have been in that main event of WrestleMania something sort of scene 
if things could have progressed the way that it seemed like it was going, like he was very close to being like, okay, you know what? He could get caught up to the main roster and win the intercontinental championship tomorrow. I mean, like there was a time where, you know, John Cena was talking about wanting to work with him. And there was a time where Shawn Michaels was saying things like, Oh, to compare him to me is to limit his ability. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's like a downward spiral real quick. I just realized right now I've been having the hot tags uh, graphic not up as the thing I get worlds collide. Let me switch over to the, the hot tag graphics off of worlds collide back later. Just realized that now. So we've been going like three stories in and I got the wrong graphic up. Ah, oops. But um, yeah, Velveteen Dream. How dare you be? Yeah, human. You know, I'm supposed to be a robot. Sometimes beep boop doesn't work. Um, let's talk about the, another whole set of stories here when it comes to people and their contract situations and coming back to companies and everything. We're going to kind of bounce around here, but there's a few uh, that we can talk about. We talk about the Bobby Fish stuff. We can talk about the Braun Strowman stuff, Bronson Reed. Um, I guess let's go AEW. Uh, we mentioned this before on the all out predictions. Bobby Fish is a free agent. It's so sad. And uh, coupling that up with news about Kyle O'Reilly getting neck fusion surgery, we still don't know when Adam Cole's going to return. And this kind of paints that picture of, okay, even more of a reason why we didn't get that elite match. But it's still also kind of just this big negative cloud of they had three out of four of the Undisputed Era and fish is gone and it seems like they pretty much approached him i I don't know i'm speculating here that the idea was well if you don't have the other two then we don't want to use you and i could see bobby fish if he had gotten that kind of conversation being like well fuck you then like (laughs) i don't need to just be another member of the tag team i could have my normal matches and everything i don't uh i don't think i would be in a different position from him if I were in his shoes. I probably would be like, then why don't you just let me go? I mean, perhaps, again, pure speculation, perhaps it's a cost-cutting measure, and it's like, hey, when they're ready to go, we'll bring you back, but if they're not going to be ready for six months to a year, you know, why don't we just part ways for now? But again, we don't really know. But it is kind of insulting to hear that, you know? To, to a degree. It's not Again, wrong. No, yeah. Well, well no, it's, it's, it gets to the point where, like, I mean, that is the company that picked him up after NXT kicked his ass out the door. <laughs> so that's kind of, like, they gave him a steady paycheck. I assume they signed him up for a year-long contract and basically said, yeah, we're not going to renew it after a year. And realistically, he is he has a his a, a history of injuries. Yep. He's not getting any younger. In fact, I believe if you uh, go in according to Twitter, he is the oldest man in, in human history. But, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Did somebody have that down? Well, yeah, oh, that's, a... that's the whole Twitter joke. Is the idea of like um uh was it? But, uh, so Bobby Fish is at least a good like ten years older than the rest of them. So like, there's this joke that he's just like ancient. How old is he? Yeah, he's forty something, know. right? Yeah, yeah but like I know, but people like people like to play their jokes. So like, say, <laughs> apparently the Big Bang started with one of the uh, Bobby Fish's kicks and something <laughs> like that, or <laughs> something like that. Like, yeah, it's obviously just all exaggeration. But he is the old guy of that group, and I think that yeah, there is just there's no real traction. Like, obviously, bringing him in from NXT, fresh out of it, and just having some good matches before you bring in Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly had some appeal to it in the short term but realistically if you're not going to have Kyle O'Reilly around to have Red Dragon as a tag team there's no Adam Cole there's really no it's, it says harsh to say but there's really no long-term benefit to having Bobby Fish as a singles guy in your roster beyond just a couple of probably decent matches mm-hmm. so so yeah he, he he definitely can still go from what we saw in AEW but it's nothing it's nothing that uh, is going to lead to like really big stories or really um, interesting angles or anything like that. He's essentially he's the third guy in. Uh, well, the, as you described him, 
yesterday. He's the fourth guy in a in the undisputed era, and he's the third guy in AEW's version of it. The two other guys have far more potential as single stars beyond the group that they're in. So I think that yeah, it, it's it's it definitely sucks, and I think we all would have wanted to see that trios match. I don't know anybody that wouldn't want to have seen that tri- trios match except Jim Cornette. But I, but I think that it would be. Um, but it's it's actually now that all this stuff about Kyle and hopefully Kyle recovers soon and he's not on the shelf for too long and hopefully Adam Cole comes back soon as well. That this is actually a pretty reasonable and understandable decision to take. Yeah, I also you know shout out to Kyle who is going through this neck fusion surgery. And no one really knew. I haven't heard a thing about Kyle O'Reilly. In fact, the last thing we saw was him getting physical, even though they said he wasn't cleared. So, you know, hopefully he recovers quickly and he's able to have a good five to ten more years. So the other thing that's going around with AEW contract stuff is that someone, if not more than one person, requested the release and was denied. And we had kind of touched on this on the predictions, but one of the major rumors for it was Malachi black. I still don't fully believe it, but I don't think that that's kind of outside of the realm of possibility either. Now the Miro one, I don't really buy into that one. I buy more into the Malachi black one than Miro, but it could be a, any number of people. Cause you know, I mean, with the way that the triple H momentum has been, you got to assume some people are like, you know what? I really haven't done anything in AEW and maybe I can do more in WWE with triple H. You know, I really liked working with him in NXT. It's totally a different ballpark with triple H than it is with Vince. Just, you know, little things, big things. Johnny Gargano being on the main roster would not have happened probably with Vince. And you know, if you're a Keith Lee or if you are, I mean, Bobby Fish, probably we, we talked about this before, but you could assume that he probably is going to end up getting some kind of a performance center coach deal or something. Maybe end up doing some guest spots here and there. Do you guys think that this Malachi Black thing, that there's something to it? Or do you think that maybe there's somebody else that it's just kind of mixed up and it's actually... I don't know, Chuck Taylor <laughs> that's like requesting his release or something or I'm pretty sure Chuck Taylor's not really Yeah, it's a random name that I came across. <laughs> um I could buy it. I can definitely buy it that Malachi Black is creatively frustrated and that he wants to uh wants to see if there was a possibility of leaving and going back to WWE. So it's quite weird as well because um again, not that this is like uh, as qu- quickly related or should be like as closely related but um when's the last time we saw selena vega in wwa oh she's been injured that's like a great question been... yeah she, yeah I, I guess the injury is mm-hmm. obviously to do, to do with that as well but it's all like malachi black or the house of black isn't frequently featured on tv again there seems to be a lack of direction and you could probably apply that to a considerable number of people in aw at the moment and he has been there a year and he had the feud with Cody and then the House of Black started to form and it doesn't feel like there is any real momentum behind the group in general. So I could totally buy into the idea that he would like to uh, opt out and see what Triple H could do for him in a new creative vision for WWE. And to be with his wife but, too. Like if she does pop up again with the post-injury hmm. stuff, then... It's a lot easier to just be like, hey, let's all travel together and, you know, (laughs) Jimmy Uso and Naomi on the same roster and plenty of other people that have been not separated by the two different companies and everything that they end up having more fun that way. Because you assume, you know, it's going to be better for your personal life. Yeah, but at the same time, they made that like. Zelina was gone. She didn't need to go back. They made the decision to, you know, let's be on different rosters and take what, like, let's see what we can do in our careers. I, the reports are conflicting, right? Because Raj Giri reported that he wanted out. 
And Sean Ross Sapp reported that he has been unhappy, but it's believed that he things were smoothed over. He signed a five-year deal with four years left on it. And then Mike Johnson reported that uh, he's got a personal situation weighing heavily on him. He's considering just leaving wrestling altogether. So who's to really say? I hope he doesn't. Like, he was one of those guys that I would want to see reach their new heights and fulfill their potential. But we'll see what happens after this. Because, like uh, Callum said yesterday, there has been a lot of talk in this rivalry about they don't need you. So maybe they're positioning the end of the House of Black if they need to do that. It does seem like they are kind of at least hinting towards that, where they could just have Buddy and Brody either as a tag team or maybe they go their separate ways too. I just want to put this out there as well, because I know some people at least have pointed to, well, Malachi Black has requested his release and they've denied it and no one's really saying anything. But when Mustafa Ali requested his release from WWE, everyone was just like the hashtag free Ali and all this other stuff. And everyone was up in arms about him getting his release. The circumstances are a little bit different in the fact that, first of all, Malachi Black is only one year into his AEW run. So Mm -hmm. I'm saying that he he shouldn't have any legitimate frustrations, but there is a lot of time for things to change. It's not like Ali, who'd been in the company about, what, four or five years? I don't know how long precisely, but he'd been there for several years prior to requesting his release. And also there was a, the fact is that even though he might not be particularly creatively satisfied, Malachi Black is on TV a considerable amount of time, whereas Mustafa Ali was barely used. So there is a difference, and there's also the difference of the fact that everything we know, it, again, I'm speculating with the fact that, like, because we don't know for certain whether he did request his release, but if, even if he has, that's all been handled behind the scenes, or it's all just, like, just being decided uh, behind closed doors. Where, right, whereas Ali, Ali Yeah, Ali actually came out and said that yeah, I want to be released at a period of time where WWE was releasing lots and lots of mm-hmm. people. And they actively decided, no, we're not going to release you, even though they would released 100 people in the t- two years prior to that. So I think um, I think the circumstances are a little bit different. So people shouldn't be looking at both in by like, painting both with the same brush. Yeah, it's different circumstances for sure. The situation is not a parallel, but I kind of hope that if that is true, that Malachi Black might just be like, look, I, I don't want to be here. I would hope that Tony Khan would be like, all right, well, then I'll let you go. Because unless you've got a real solid plan that you think is going to be a game changer for your brand, I mean, Malachi Black's not going to be the needle mover that makes the biggest difference. Let's be honest. Like, we're not talking Austin going from. WWF to WCW in 1997 kind of material here. If you don't, if you don't got anything for we him, don't know that. let him go. Let him be happier. You know? I mean, we don't know that because I'm pretty sure most people when um, Austin went to WWE in like 96, nobody thought that he'd be the game changer that uh, he ended I'm up I'm talking being, about momentum so. though. Like right now, Malachi Black doesn't have that kind of momentum. Yeah, but I mean, like if you would have released the ringmaster in April of 96 because he didn't have any momentum. He would have missed out in a cash cow. It's, and that is kind of the risk that you take. I think that there is a mindset right now of, well, you know, fuck it. You're not doing anything with him. Just let him go. But maybe Tony does have plans for him in the next four years. I don't think it's, you know, the worst thing in the world for them to say, Hey, let's try to keep you on. Let's work this out. But I do think that if it's really just a personal issue and he just wants to leave wrestling altogether, then in that case, maybe you do just let him go. But again, lots of conflicting reports. So what can you really say? And of course, since we don't know if any of this is true at all, let alone that it is Malachi Black, because it could be true and it could be somebody else, then that changes everything too. 
if this turns out to just be like, you know what, actually it wasn't Malachi Black, it was actually uh Yeah, I mean the the reports from Sean and Mike, who are more credible, are like it's not right, yeah. Black. But the fact that there's no like he's not out saying it like Mustafa Ali was. So we can't be like, okay, that's and, you know, hundred percent definite that sort of thing. If it turns out to be somebody else, then it's another whole story, like a Samoa Joe or something, or you know, a Wardlow or you know, whatever it might be. But I think that it's probably just that Malachi Black story, and I think that that's something to keep an eye on at the very least. Let's talk about Braun Strowman and Bronson Reed, seemingly two people that probably will come back to WWE relatively soon. Braun Strowman might be actually tomorrow. I clashed the castle Monday. Uh, I I think Monday. I don't think he's going to Cardiff. It could be unless I mean, good Lord. Isn't that one of the last things he did was the thing with Tyson Fury. But I wouldn't want to see that. uh, No, the Tyson Fury thing. That's got to be Drew McIntyre. But Sherman could be involved in something on Clash. He could just be popping up on Raw afterward. Uh, that could be making good on that uh, W E F <laughs> travel to Europe. <laughs> no, I don't know if we're going to hear that. Uh, was it Wrestling Entertainment Series? That was the name of it. A dumb name. Yeah. Um, I think that we're going to see both. Uh, soon. Not that like at Clash, but I think that Braun Strowman's probably going to be here by Monday, and I think that Bronson Reed is not that far off. Yeah, I I'm not confident in Bronson Reed because I know Jonah's enjoying New Japan and stuff like that. But I am confident in Braun Strowman probably showing up by Monday night. Yeah, I think um, Jonah might be. I think he, 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 he but they very well could come back to WWE, but I think there is at least a short period of time that he'll be sticking with New Japan because he does have a big match for Carter lined up because he beat Okada in the G1. That means he gets to take on Okada for the uh, G1 briefcase. That's typically how things would work in New Japan. So he's got one big match there. After that match, he'd probably pretty much be free to go, but just depends on how he's enjoying it there. Just because he's left Impact Wrestling doesn't mean that he is done with or done with any other promotion and is just going to go straight to WWE. Mm. Uh, With Braun Strowman, uh, there's pretty much no other option. Yeah. Because control your narrative is not WS uh, is a, yeah, book and, and uh, yeah, control your narrative is pretty much like dead in the water because you've got EC3 appearing in NWA and other places so uh, uh, the, the basically the uh, public decided to control that company's narrative and decided that they uh, wanted to end the story pretty quickly and so he gets to turn up in a WWE which I I don't know whether it's a good move or not and that's just due to the fact that I don't think he was doing much in the final year prior to his release. And ever since then, he's just become a more controversial figure, let's say. And so, I, yeah, I think that I don't know what he would add back beside being, well, he's obviously a giant. He's a big guy. He's a former world champion. He definitely has more ability than Omos. Mm-hmm. So if they essentially want to trade up in terms of giants, but I don't like there's pretty much nobody in the company that has joined since Strowman was released that I really want to see him wrestle against. He's pretty much fought everyone at the top end. And the only people that he probably hasn't are Cody, maybe a couple of other people, but that's about it. And yeah, so I I'm not particularly infused about this re signing. It doesn't hit me in the same way that I'll call Dakota Kai is back and she's going to be on the main roster and other stuff. Like there, there seems to be possibilities and untapped potential there. I think they pretty much tapped Strowman for everything that he had. My feeling on this is that they're correct in course. Strowman should have never been released. And yes, in the time since I agree with Callum, he's only become more polarizing and more like, well, now I don't know if I want him there. But when the man was, when his last match was a pay-per-view match for the WWE Championship. How do you go, well, we don't need this guy. When he's a guy who's beaten Goldberg, when he's, you know, he's a name that has some weight to it, 
if you need it on your roster. And I think more than anything, this is Triple H going. You're a former champion. Probably should have never been let go in the first place. Let's get you back here. Plus, I could see them using him as somebody to put other people over. Like, Gunther can beat him and it makes Gunther look better. Karrion Cross could beat him for like a little feud. That could work. Well, realistically, Karrion Cross and German should be together because they're controlling their narrative together. But that, that's also the other aspect of it is that if you're just bringing back a guy to essentially play as a um, jobber to the stars, it's a jobber to the stars. <laughs> yeah, jobber to the stars type role. How much is he going to be on? How much is he going to be earning? Yeah. Because he was on a like a million dollar contract prior to it. I mean, maybe he's able to come down a little bit because there's not much other offers out there. Mm-hmm. Right. But so hope. Well, I, if WWE is smart, they they have uh, whittled him down to a more reasonable salary. But even still, I think um, he's still going to be. You have to imagine like a pretty considerable earner, and if he's just there to. Uh, yeah, put other guys over. Again, it's it's a role that needs to be fulfilled. I'm not saying that that has no value to it whatsoever, but it does limit you because eventually, once you start losing pretty consistently, it doesn't mean that much when people beat you. I think he's been out of the company 16 months today. And I think in that time, he's done literally nothing. So he's probably ready to come back to where like, okay, I'll be used again. I'll be getting a consistent pay. I'll be, you know, doing what I want to do. I'll be with Raquel. That's another thing I was going to bring up, yeah, because we were talking earlier about, There's a like, lot Malachi and uh, Zelina. Like, Raquel and Braun are an item. So, And, like, you know, he's good friends with Bliss. I mean, like, it only... I see the personal positives. It's just, like, as a fan, do I really want to see this guy come back? Because even before... He left like I wasn't feeling the changes they made to him once they shaved his head and he started wrestling with, with, the, with the shirt on. He did that program with Shane. The uh, yeah, that was terrible. Yeah. Run. <laughs> yeah, like that wasn't great. So I just wasn't feeling him when he left. So I hope whatever they do with him, it's better but now. To be the devil's advocate for it. We didn't see what he would be like under Triple H. And that's a new wrinkle for pretty much everybody. Like the b- 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 Braun thing was a Vinceism, and maybe Braun under Triple H is like the you know the coolest monster that we could possibly get. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm willing to see what happens. I've liked Braun Strowman. I don't like his takes <laughs> at this point, but uh, yeah, it's neither here nor there. Um, one person that I can't say I'm excited to see coming back at any point and it seems like that's probably the case all around is gable steveson the phrasing everything has gotten cold on gable steveson is very uh very obvious i guess you could say but at least there's some confirmation behind it this guy seems like he is one of those why are we talking about it here this yeah well yeah we gotta cool down a little bit it's too hot so i've been a long critic of gable steveson's whole WWE career because to me I didn't see anything worth investing in he didn't seem like he could cut a great promo his like one flip that he did with Chad Gable was like okay so he can do that show me something more uh, he doesn't have an, a, an interesting look to him he doesn't have an interesting personality going on that what I had seen and it seemed all about nothing just hey Olympic guy is interested and then nothing and nothing and nothing and nothing and nothing. So I am kind of happy and unhappy. I'm unhappy that I wasn't proven wrong. I'm happy that I was proven right in that I didn't see anything and then nothing seems to be happening. Um, Damon Kemp seems to be getting positive reviews, but this Ariel Hawani review uh, interview with triple H very much pointing in the direction of, yeah, maybe Gable Stevenson's not all that good. And maybe that's why he's not doing well, that. No. Well, no, they didn't say anything in that regard. All Triple H said about Gable was that he was going to work with him. 
at Mania to get him really started and put him over real quick so he'd be off to the races. But it's clear that we didn't we haven't seen him since. And maybe one of the reasons that we haven't seen him since is just that. Like, to go from, hey, you're going to work Triple H at WrestleMania to you want to work Chad Gable at WrestleMania Backlash? I like Chad Gable, but maybe, you know, maybe he wasn't feeling that. Um, I don't know. I'm not ready to give it up yet. I'm not as sour on it as you are because I'm like, I see what they see. He's an Olympic gold medalist. And if you can get him acclimated to the WWE world, it could be great. Yeah, again, I I can see, obviously, there is the obvious reason why they would sign him up. That They did the same thing with Mark Henry, and Mark Henry was a flop for the first, like, five years of his WWE career. So, and then he turned well, like out first great. first 10. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, realistically. And then he turned out great. So, there is still, again, don't want to just write him off completely, but there is clearly, uh, there was clearly a plan in place when they drafted him last year to Raw and presumably they wanted him to be part of WrestleMania if that's what Triple H said so there was obviously intention for him to be part of the roster by about March or April and so now it's we're all like into September and there's been hiding or hair of him and I can't see that changing anytime soon there's been no indication that's changing anytime soon and if the report from the Wrestling Observer is to be believed and i don't and there is no reason why i would i wouldn't uh, believe that one is that yeah he's not progressing and that is or at least not progressing at the pace they would want him to be when you look at his brother his brother is doing pretty damn well in nxt mm-hmm. he is a talented worker he's a i don't say he's the most dynamic wrestler of all time but he's a solid he's got a solid amateur background and he's using that to his full ability he is having good matches he had a great a, a very good match with Roderick Strong. Of course, most people have very good matches with Roderick Strong, but he still holds his end of the bargain. So the fact that he is, I would say excelling, but definitely working to a standard where they're happy to have him regularly be featured on television, whereas Gable Stevenson, they're just actively keeping away from programming, does give the indication that, yeah, he's a slow learner. And if they are going to get anything out of him, it's going to be a longer timetable than they would have expected. The problem with that is that as soon as you spent, basically kept him uh, wrapped under lock and key for two years, by that point in time that he does come in, probably a lot of people would have forgotten the fact who he mm-hmm. was and the fact that he won a gold medal in the first place. It, and then you've lost all of that momentum that he had originally come in. That's to assume that people but are even you- tracking that to begin with. Like, I am somebody who, I don't give a shit about the Olympics. I don't pay any attention to that. I've... Every once in a while, you know, some kind of a, an off year, I might watch a little bit of it. Like the um, Chinese Olympics. I forget which one it was. It's like 2008 might have been. I had watched a good Beijing, portion yeah. of that because at that time it was just like I was up at, you know, six in the morning and there was nothing else on TV. So I would just put on like MSNBC or some kind of coverage of that and be like, oh, OK, I'm watching fencing or some bullshit, you know, but like. You know, not everybody knows who is playing in the Super Bowl each year. And that's a much, much bigger deal. I think if you were to ask, you know, I I wanted to be one of those people that would be on the streets and just, you know, bring up in a, a microphone, start interviewing people in uh, New York and just be like, all right, who's Gabe, uh, Gable Stevenson? I don't know if many people would really actually be able to tell me who that is. And, you know, the people that are into the amateur wrestling thing aren't necessarily into pro wrestling. A lot of them hate it with a passion because that stuff's fake and blah, blah, blah. And then the people that are into pro wrestling in the sports entertainment side are like, well, I'm not going to watch amateur wrestling because that stuff is just boring. There's no character. There's no drama, no story, whatever. The crossover can happen. There's plenty of people like uh, Brock or Shelton Benjamin or Ziggler or whatever that they do both. But I don't think that it's one of those, like, I, I would go so far as to say, like, the Logan Paul thing is infinitely a better deal. And that's so weird to say. My argument to that is, if you get someone who's worth it and who is good, then you don't need to worry about, well, it's been a couple of years since he won the Olympics. Because look at Angle. They wanted Angle in 96. 
that hell no, I'm a real wrestler and I'm not going to lose just because you're telling me to lay down. And then once he was ready, three years later, he became one of the best in the world. Maybe that's the path that Gable can carve out. They're definitely not going to get what they thought they were in terms of getting the instant buzz of him winning the Olympics. But I still understand what they see in him and what he can do. I think um, any comparisons to Kurt Angle at this point are only going to hurt his uh, <laughs> hurt his chances more than help them. Especially because Kurt, it's not like Kurt started, well, uh, turned them down in 96 and then started uh, like m- months later to learn how to wrestle. He started pretty much the year that he came onto the screen. So he was one of the quickest guys to ever pick up this, uh, this, uh, this pick up the business and turn up to be one of the best of all time. Just an absolute natural. And right, but is everyone... Gable actually signed to them, or is he signed to an NIL deal? I mean, you'd assume that he is signed, considering the fact they've already provided him around on Raw, and he's technically Raw. part of the Raw roster. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's one of those we've seen things. him do, you know, like the appearances and everything. The next in line people, we haven't seen anything of any of them. Like, they pretty much just put them up on the website, and then they disappeared. So I don't even know if that's a thing, period. It might literally just be these people are somewhat interested in possibly maybe being considering the idea. Like I forget the phrase that Marge uses when she's uh, trying to figure out the PETA business. So they they took the one place that I was thinking about maybe possibly becoming interested in, you know, that kind of thing. (laughs) It could just be that. Like, they... The next in line thing could be less about we're actually bringing these people onto the roster and more about we just want to make it seem like we are an option. It's a PR thing. Because they even like, didn't they do, release a whole thing recently where Triple H was um, at the conference table and he was showing all those people like, hey, we we're going to sign you for a contract. And then they didn't even announce them on the site. Like they're playing weird with these signings this past year. Do you think it will get to the point where if things aren't progressing with Gable Stevenson the way they want to, that one day they decide to just call up Damon Kemp and call him Gable Stevenson? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, hey, if Damon Kemp is really good, maybe you just change Gable Stevenson's name, which is funny. But maybe it's like, oh, no, no, you're not an Olympic gold medalist. You're this guy's brother. What's so it more Gable Stevenson is Damon Kemp's brother? <laughs> <laughs> yeah so he could be uh gable, gable camp yeah now. or the, uh, i mean if they want to yeah. change that and keep gable and chad gable and all that they could be steve kemp <laughs> yeah that's good <laughs> steve kemp and david damon kemp there you go that's the future got one more hot tag to talk about for going into tv content and the world's collide stuff and that is mickey james has said that her last or her next loss is her last loss and that she will Effectively, what she's teasing here is when she loses, she retires. I, uh, so oh, go ahead. Um, first of all, we're covering Impact, which is amazing that we're actually talking about Impact, but, um, I'm not certain because wrestling is a carny business. If she just means I won't wrestle in Impact true. again, I do think she's in a place in her career where she would just retire. And I think this is a great role for her. It worked a- very well for Flair. In his last run in WWE. Um, this is good. This is cool. It's a cool story for her. It makes every match more meaningful. I imagine she'll just win and win and win until like next year's Bound for Glory. It's that the, yeah, like I, I don't follow Impact, of course, so I don't know what she's been up to. Has she been like on a losing streak or anything? Like, so. so- yeah, go ahead, Cal. So what happened is that um, a, well, a couple of months ago, she was the Impact uh, Women's Champion, Impact World Champion, uh, Knockout Champion. What am I saying? Knockout Champion, and she lost it to Tasha Steeles. They went and she couldn't win the title back from her. She went on this feud with Chelsea Green over like their friendship breaking down, and she lost a few matches and basically disappeared for a little while. Now she's back on TV, and she's basically, as Rob's pointed out, she's going to do the flare thing. So she's going to go on this final run, 
where she wants to beat basically everybody on the entire roster to pr- work from the bottom up and prove herself that she still has what it takes. And if she loses at any point on the journey, then she will call it quits. And they already done like a segment behind the scenes where you had like Jordan Grace, who is the current knockout champion. They say to her, I would give you a title shot right now if I could. But if you want to take this thing, I totally respect you and I would look forward to seeing you down the road. Of course, we don't know if Jordan Grace is going to be the knockout champion by the time that Mickey does get to it because she's defending the title against uh, Masha Slamovich. uh, What's this person's name? Masha Masha Slamovich. Slam a bitch. I, I honest to God wish she could call herself Masha Slam a bitch <laughs> because I think it's funnier. <laughs> but you know, all right. And some. Bitch. That's what she does. I think, I think, I think that's really. I think that's a good name. That's a very um like uh whoever Rocky would be fighting in um like yeah. the, the foreign guy Rocky would be fighting in one of his movies. That that I think that's a it's a, it's a perfectly serviceable. Yeah, yeah. Name. It's instantly Maybe. they're my favorite now. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so maybe she'll be champion. Maybe someone else will be champion by the time. Because if Mickey has not to go through the whole roster, that could be a months long thing. And who knows? She could just lose a random match to an up and coming person they really want to build up and never get that opportunity to be knockout champion again. But I think it'll just be a case of oh yeah, she'll probably lose that, take a I don't know a year, half a year off, and then she'll uh, be doing a one off match in NWI at some point. Come back for a Royal Rumble or something. Yeah, I could definitely see her quote unquote retiring and then unretiring the way that pro wrestling is. But Mickey's one of those people that I've been, you know, for years and years and years. And when she came back to WWE, I was like, oh my God, finally. And then she ended up not being booked all that well. And then I could understand why she was gone and everything. But I've always thought that she deserved more than what she had been getting. And at the end of everything, I'm hoping that. At the very least, she's inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame and that there's like this good vibe going on because I feel like she's somebody who it's been like years and years that they could have tapped more into Mickey and she could have ended up being, you know, winning in the championship again or something. And, you know, when she's wrestling for like NWA or whatever, of course, I'm not paying that much attention to it at all because I'm just not watching those companies, but I always felt like she should be better off in wwe than anywhere else and i'd like to see her up against some of these other people i'm kind of hoping that this retirement is more i'm going to leave impact and maybe i'll pop up in wwe (laughs) i think it's actually demonstrably provable that she's actually better anywhere else outside of wwe yeah that's that's the one problem with mickey is i do understand her retiring in impact because they have always treated her with the utmost respect but I also agree with you, Tony. I'd love to see her against a lot of the names in WWE. I'd like to see her do a one on one with Bianca. I'd like to see. I don't remember if she did a one on one with Bailey, but she should do it again because I'm sure that'd be great. Um, there's plenty of women for her to work, and we'll see what the future holds. And I guess that's the hot tag. So I guess we can talk about the TV stuff in here. Yeah, might as well. Actually, before we just move into the TV thing, just um, as if we are talking about Impact, I know uh, we briefly mentioned it like before we started recording, but uh, just want to just put the uh, best wishes out there for Joe During. For um, absolutely yes. Uh, so he's obviously uh, in Impact. He's part of the uh, Violent by Design faction with Eric Young and uh, is it Cody? It's it's not Cody Diener, is it? It's Cody Diener, yeah. Oh, it's Cody well, Diener. I was wondering if the, Diener, I wonder if the other Diener. Yeah, no, it's Cody. Okay. And, um, yeah, so he pre- previously uh, was diagnosed with brain cancer, managed to beat it, but it's returned, which means he's going to be taking an extended period out of uh, impact. So wishing him all the best for a speedy recovery. And I think Impact recently have just released a T-shirt, which is um, it's got essentially a cartoon image of Joe During with the phrase, keep calm and kick ass. And uh, all the proceeds for people who buy that shirt will go towards his uh, his medical bills. So that's good. That's good to see as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Well wishes to him. He's fantastic. He's a great like old school eater kind of heel. And 
Sucks to hear that the cancer returned, and I'm sure he'll kick his ass again. Uh, yeah, so the TV stuff for WWE and all that, I, I, does anybody think that I'm breezing by this? I don't know anything about Joe Doring, but I echo what these guys are saying. Um, obviously, well wishes. Uh, Monday Night Raw, double checking to see if there's anything that we didn't address in the Clash stuff. I don't think there really is anything. And they're starting a little bit more of the Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn against the Uso stuff, but you know, we kind of factored that in there too. That's going to be fantastic. Really looking forward to that. Say it again. That's going to be so good. Well, we didn't talk about Kurt Angle. That was the thing. They just brought him in for a quick little, like, hey, remember Kurt Angle? And they worked a little bit with the. He said, shoot. Yeah. He said, (laughs) They got the milk stuff going with the Street Profits. I thought that was funny. I was kind of hoping that they would have lost and he would have been a part of Alpha Academy. (laughs) It's it's one of those um, things where, um, like, there's been there have been way too many matches between the Street Profits and Alpha Academy in the last year, but they always have good matches, and this is one of the better ones as well. They actually really made it work well, and that's that's part of the whole Triple H dynamic of longer matches as well. So, so, so for what it was, it was good, but I would be fine with these teams not facing each other for a long, long time. Yeah, it was nice to see Kurt, but I was also kind of like Tony, where I was like. Well, maybe they maybe they lose, and he has to join the Alpha Academy, and we can do something with that. But it was a fun bit with the milk, and they had a good match with uh, Gable and Montez. So it was fine. And I don't think there's really anything else that we hadn't talked about. Pretty much everything with that. Now, NXT, we will kind of come back around to that with the uh, World's Collide stuff that's coming up after this. But on the AEW side of things, they... Of course, we talked some of the stuff that's going to lead into the All Out stuff. We don't know about Rampage yet, so we can't really talk about that. But anything else on Dark or uh, I highly doubt with Dark or Dynamite or whatever that you guys feel like, hey, let's call attention to this. Um, They released a Scissor Me Daddy Ass t-shirt, and I think that's great. Very happy for everyone that wanted one. <laughs> um. There, I mean, there's not that much that we haven't already covered because a lot of the show was building towards All Out, so we covered a great deal of it on the actual... Uh, so if you want to hear our thoughts about it, for most about this show and everything else, then you should definitely check out the predictions we did for it. Yeah, and you should but, check them out anyway because you should check out yeah. everything we do. We didn't really talk about the beat uh, Morrissey. Oh, no, because... that's... Uh, yeah, that's that's a new thing. I mean, we, we I thought that um, we, we mentioned it briefly as part of maybe a potential for the casino. Mm-hmm ladder match but yeah that's a it's an interesting signing i think um aew could use a, a couple of giants that can actually work and, like Allah not sat i'm seeing <laughs> so yeah and, sign commander is like, with uh, <laughs> he's big not many <laughs> other people are uh, but w morris is seven foot tall and you just can't yeah, take that's true. but uh i think that yeah i, I would like to see hit what they have planned with him. I think he could be a good, um, the good heavy for a faction, whether um, Stokely Hathaway is cooking up, that could be a fun way to use him. Um, other stuff. I want to talk about the Ace Steel thing a little bit, because Ace Steel, when he was doing that uh, pep talk with CM Punk, uh, said the word fuck on a, on a live yeah, absolutely television. He did say the word fuck. Yeah, though he, he was and, just like, uh, you fucking whatever. And I'm like, all right, didn't they have a whole yeah. thing about, you're not supposed to say shit. That's no, there, there was a spe- well, no, there's there was even it went even beyond that for this week. There's a specific edict for both Dynamite and Rampage that no swearing whatsoever in the build up towards All Out because there's going to be a lot of attention on these shows, and they did over a million viewers again. So congrats to them. But um, he essentially just went straight to the back and pretty much paid an immediate fine for uh, for that swear, which is like good on him for just immediately coughing up the money for that, but. It's a uh, yeah. You have to say added a, a layer of intensity to that segment. But uh, like I, I know a lot of people weren't into that, but like I said, I think that is what that segment needed. You know, there was this raw energy of like, okay, yeah, I don't care that we just saw this because like, let's fucking go. He's gonna kill him this time. Like it, it felt like the right move. You know, um, 
Do I think that they should be saying shit as often as they have been and saying fuck? Probably not, but I thought it was really cool that he slipped it in there and then never did it again. I think that they should be perfectly fine saying that. Where's our words? Everybody needs to grow a pair. <laughs> shit, fuck hell. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, YouTube. Yeah, fuck YouTube <laughs> yeah. and their fucking whatever cursing shit. <laughs> Monetize, I think this is a great time to bring up that we have a Patreon. <laughs> we do, in fact, have to. If you want to make sure that we <laughs> can make some money on that, then, you know, we'll do the uh, special only expletives edition of Smack Talk on the Dark Yeah, give us your fucking money, you cunts. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Dark Cast can be called the Fuck Cast. <laughs> then it could just be, you know, hey, welcome to another fucking episode or whatever. Um, that'd be great if I just get some kind of report at the end of this where it's like not monetized and I go, God damn it. Yeah, that's a curse too. Look at that. I'm digging a deeper hole. Anyway, the, uh, Patreon and the little join button that you see over there on YouTube are means to directly sponsor us in a different way, you know, just to make sure that we keep the lights on and everything like that. You have to pick your poison tier where you can request things. So if you're like, yeah, give me the the play the game edition where you guys are you know acting like fucking fools or whatever but you know maybe i want to get some swear related t public and red bubble merch if that's the thing that you're interested in picking up then check out those things the little thanks button's another great way for you to just toss a little spare change our way and you know even if it's a dollar a month that is something that helps out a lot especially the more people that do that as i've said many many times in the past if everybody who was subscribed to this channel donated one dollar a month we would be able to quit other jobs and we would be able to pass that on in different ways to you guys as far as better content, you know, more video content and just, you know, all in general stuff for Smart Out Moment and for Fanboys Anonymous because it's all under a mango tree. So if you want to make sure we do that, then that is the absolute number one best way to do it. Another great way of making sure that you help us out is to check out our sponsors for this episode. And for many of our episodes here, Manscaped. Now, Manscaped has so many different products that you should be interested in picking up because they are the number one best in men's grooming. Their tools are the best for your family jewels. And, you know, we are ending smooth sack summer. That's going by here. It's still hot out, though. Really hot. So you want to make sure that you're ready for fresh ball fall. <laughs> with these different tools you got the shears kit to clean up your nails and everything you got the lawnmower you got the weed whacker all the different crop mop and preservers and dusters and colognes and all to keep you smelling nice my wife just left to go uh pick up some stuff uh some other things like some groceries and all that but i know that uh she would be echoing my thoughts here as far as the deodorant and the crop gel and all that stuff big fan of the body wash that is easily the best body wash i've got uh two backups of those when i run out of that because it's so awesome and when you are picking anything up on manscaped then if you use the promo code smark s-m-a-r-k you get 20 percent off and free shipping so no matter what it is you're picking up whether it is one of those tools or if it's just like the travel bag or one of the t-shirts or you are subscribing to the, the recurring plans and getting you know different razors or uh refill of yeah even the uh little mats to clean up when you're uh shaving down there then it'll still apply 20 percent off and free shipping great deal for you to pick up some great tools so thank you to manscaped thank you for anybody who helps us out on picking up something from there and thank you for anybody who helps us out on the other things under the marketplace fuck <laughs> <laughs> had to throw it out there uh that's tv talk um yeah all right i think that we are kind of done with the hot tag section of this right nothing else that i'm forgetting maybe or am i um no i i, I think i think that's good i think we're we're good yeah we got we got we got some other fresh fish to fry now what kind of fish are we talking talking salmon we're talking uh... yeah, apparently we're talking bobby he's, <laughs> bobby uh, yeah he's just uh, out there swimming in the free agent sea in the free agent agency. sea. <laughs> I was hoping you'd pick up on that. <laughs> well, nobody was telling us about their uh, favorite breads. Very disappointed in you people. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we won't get too deep into the fish talk. Instead, we're going to talk about the Worlds Collide pay-per-view that's coming up. 
We've got the NXT side of WWE and the NXT UK side of WWE, which effectively doesn't exist anymore because the last episode aired. I honestly, sadly, didn't even watch it. I did. <laughs> did they like at least say, hey, you know, thanks for whatever? Or did they just add oh, no, a normal there episode? A big, there was a big there was a big video package. Oh, there was? Saying, Thank you. It ended with a uh, photo of all of the talent and staff around the ring saying thank you. It, they, they made it very clear that it was the last episode of NXT UK. Hmm. I might have to go back and check it out. But the NXT UK brand is done. NXT Europe is happening at some point. We don't know exactly when. More than likely not happening until well into 2023. So they got to get rid of those NXT UK titles. And the best way that they were doing that is they're merging all but one of them. Kind of odd, but okay. With this Worlds Collide thing, uh, they are also including Raw and SmackDown superstars in this because they've done that before. I mean, Worlds Collide, I don't remember it being 100% always just NXT and NXT UK. We had 205 Live, we've had Raw and SmackDown. They've kind of played around with that. It's basically just cross-branded kind of material, but... Five matches are announced on here. It is starting at 3.30 p.m. for the kickoff. And oh, that's on Eastern for anybody that's wondering, just in case. And carrying on probably right up to All Out with uh, 7 o'clock. I'm assuming that we're around that range. We still don't know for sure about the post show. It's either going to be happening during the main event and, you know, kind of backtracking and talk about that just to kind of save some space. Or if we do have enough time, we'll just do it right afterward. You'll have to stay tuned for that because we literally can't know until it's starting to happen. But we can at least talk about our predictions for this, for these five matches, and start off with the NXT Women's Tag Team Championship match. Katana Chance and Caden Carter, KC and KC, didn't have an equivalent for NXT UK that would have made any sense whatsoever. So instead of doing NXT versus NXT UK, they're doing what I actually am giving them a pat on the back for being like a pretty smart way around this do drop and Nikki ASH popped up at the last minute. They said, Hey, you know what? We want to challenge you for those titles. And not only is this worlds collide in the sense of, all right, this is NXT versus the main roster. Do drop was NXT UK. Nikki was NXT. They're both from outside of the United States. So this is kind of great <laughs> that they booked this. It's not going to be the best match of the night. I'm pretty sure easily going to be the worst match of the night. And I don't think that the championship's going to change hands, but I'm like, you know what? Out of all the possible options that they could have gone here, I really like this. I just want to be clear. I don't think the titles will change hands, but I think they absolutely should. I think Nikki and Dewdrop deserve something. And I do commend WWE for putting this match on. And if the ball was in my court, I'd give it to Nikki and Dewdrop because, you know, let them wrestle on NXT for a bit. They're still not being used in a grand way on Monday Night Raw. So put them in NXT. Yeah, I can echo that sentiment. I'd be much happier with Dewdrop and Nikki being the... Uh... NXT Women's Tag Champions, but it's very, very unlikely that it's going to happen considering how uh, it's been only a very short window of time since uh, Casey and Casey won the titles. So I think that they'll almost certainly retain. It does make me feel um, slightly odd about the fact that this is the first, um, it's the first big UK pay-per-view in um, on Saturday that they've had since SummerSlam all those years, SummerSlam 1992. And two of their actual British wrestlers are going to be stuck in the uh, performance center doing a doing a show on the tertiary brand. But uh, yeah, I think that the likelihood is that the champions will retain, and they'll this will continue to fuel what seems to be a recurring backstage thing, where pretty much in every single interview we seem to see uh, Nikki and Dewdrop arguing in the backstage. Uh, it like in the <laughs> in the behind shot behind whoever's actually being interviewed or is happening they both seem to just be arguing with each other so i wouldn't be surprised if they lose do drop just flattens nikki ash and this is the the transition towards the return of nikki cross and 
by God, a return of Piper Niven. Am I right? Yeah, Piper Niven. Nice as well. Great news. Could very well be the case. I mean, we know that uh, Dewdrop has said in an interview that she's talked to Triple H about dropping that fucking Dewdrop name because it's stupid as all hell. So. It's not the, uh, you know, the, you know, if you're going to book NXT versus the main roster or whatever, this is the match that would be selling the pay-per-view. But it's it's cool. I like it. It's way better than anything. Like, look, I'll say this. NXT did a great job this week in making Worlds Collide seem like it was a very special and important show. They did a rush job, but they... And they, like, I mean, not to excuse it, I don't think that the rush job should pretty much ever happen, whether it's NXT or if it's all out or whatever. But they managed to take what was sort of like, all right, you only have two matches here. You got to do something with some of these other ones. And then they ended up cramming that in in a way that works. So I'll give them credit for that. We're all going KC and KC, right? Yep. Yep. Here's one of my 50-50 splits. We got Carmelo Hayes at the very end of the episode pops up and says, I wasn't even booked for Worlds Collide. This is bullshit. So you know what? I'm not taking my talents there. Screw you guys. I'm going home. <laughs> Essentially pulling a Cartman. And that didn't feel like that was the right method to bring out Noam Dar and the NXT UK Heritage Cup. But that is the equivalent title. The North American Championship is the mid-card title. The Heritage Cup is was the mid-card title for NXT UK. Okay, I'm begging you to realize that it's a specialty belt and that it was not the equivalent of the North American title and that the reason they're not unifying it is because they'll eventually bring it back when they do the European thing. But it was. <laughs> it, it was the mid-card title. They gave it to the mid-card champion spot. It was a good move on. <laughs> Oh, Callum, uh, subtle the argument. We have a split crowd here. Was it or was it not the mid-card title? Oh, there's me not caring again. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what that feeling was. It's just me not caring again. <laughs> I don't blame you. It is NXT UK. But the... Uh, uh, was it, wasn't the Heritage Cup supposed to be a thing where like, it, like you could cash it in for a world title match? What was I completely wrong with that? That's crazy. I, I don't know if I've ever heard that. But I don't think cool. that they've ever mentioned it. I was thought like that they should do, they should have done something like that. Like it was a um, what was it like um, NWA has a belt like that. That's the one that Tyrus had before he cashed it in, right? And uh, they do that. On, they did that on Lucha Underground as well. You have this uh, belt called the Gift of the Gods Championship, and you can cash that in for a world title opportunity at any point in time. And so I thought it would be cool to have a thing where you basically okay win this cup and still defend the cup around but at some point let's say somebody defends it five times successfully they can basically decide then to okay i'm now gonna relinquish this and next week i get my title opportunity they should they should do something like that i think it's a good way of uh the AEW should introduce something like that so it's a good way of getting around rankings as well i agree with that yeah. actually i wouldn't be opposed to something like that or at least trying it out but just doesn't seem like the Heritage Cup is a factor in here at all. And no. I don't think that they're actually going to bring it back either. I think that this is just done. And maybe the reason why they didn't mention it at all and maybe why it's not happening here is because they actually don't want to bring attention to it. Maybe it's just like, look, that was an NXT UK thing and whatever, we're moving on, it's retired. Because instead, Carmelo Hayes is going up against Ricochet, who had popped up and said... I don't know why NXT is the only one that can be a part of Worlds Collide. Let's get some SmackDown blue stuff in here. And Carmelo Hayes versus Ricochet. I'm down to see it. That's going to be a hell of a match. So I, I kind of go from the, ah, uh, why aren't they unifying the titles to, okay, well, you know, <laughs> it's not like it's Carmelo Hayes. Yeah, that's, that's yeah it's better. not like it's Carmelo Hayes defending the title against like, uh, what's his name? Hank Williams. Oh, no, Hank Walker. Is that what it is? Hank Williams is the security I'm talking guard. To John Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Show my age here. Yeah, like it, if that would have been the case, and Carmelo Hayes is just up against some random person in WWE that doesn't really seem to make a you know splash or whatever. Sure, fine, whatever. But Ricochet, it's pretty cool. I'm down to see that. I think it's going to be a hell of a match. 
I think Hayes is going to retain. I think it's going to be a really good match. I think it's one of those matches that should make Ricochet feel like, yeah, I love wrestling. I miss being in NXT. Um, Hayes is so good. He should move up to the main roster just because he's got so much charisma. And I, I love it. I like um, his uh, Twitter really, shot that all he said is, why is he bald? <laughs> it's like, that's his, <laughs> his main way of continuing this feud. Ricochet's bald. <laughs> Admittedly, I thought it was going to be Gargano. I thought Gargano was going to do a thing where he goes, listen, if I'm going to come back to WWE, I obviously have to come back and wrestle my first match in NXT. But I like this better because Ricochet can actually win the belt. And I don't know if people would miss him on SmackDown. I don't think he's going to win, but I think it's a possibility. And Melo wins in a banger. Yeah, I mean, I'll lean towards Gargano Hayes getting the victory as well. But the match, as you both pointed out will be very good and it's there's there is still that element of doubt because there is no reason why they wouldn't give the title to ricochet he's held the north american championship before so there's a bit of a circularity about that as well when you've got people like apollo Crews that are now on nxt so there might be some more fluidity between the brands especially with triple h now at the helm so who knows? They could just give it to Ricochet for a little while. He holds it for a bit, drops it to someone else that's up and coming. I mean, because most of the kind of up and coming heel mid card people in NXT are heels. You've got like Grayson Waller, Tony D'Angelo, um, Joe Gacy, technically. And... Yeah, 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 yeah. Joe Gacy. I mean, Cameron Grimes already held the title, but and he's babyface at the moment. But uh, but yeah, you look at people like that. Rumors of so, Solo Sokoa coming up to the main roster as a heel pretty soon. Yeah, so if that that's limiting the number of like baby faces that you have. I mean, uh, Von Wagner's heel as well. So it actually makes it almost seem that switching onto a baby face like Ricochet actually makes more sense. I mean, that Giovanni Vinci, another one. So, so yeah, maybe this is the opportunity to take the belt off Carmelo and move him up to the main roster with Trick Williams. But I think that I think that the likelihood is they'll have Kamala retain and just give him a uh, a scalp with Ricochet, a bald scalp, as it were. <laughs> yeah, this is one of those things where I um I think that like this could tap into the old takeover performance level, not just because it's one of the black and gold guys popping back up, but we know that Hayes is good, so this could be like the equivalent of how we used to get some of those real banger matches on an NXT takeover Brooklyn or, or something. They definitely are going to put out all stops. So looking forward to that. Looking forward to the fatal four way elimination tag team championship unification match. <sighs> NXT tag team champions, the Creed brothers versus NXT UK tag team champions, Josh Briggs and Brooks Jensen, probably with Fallon Henley on the side. Gallus is in there. So the two of them are going to end up going to there. It's Mark coffee and Joe coffee and Wolfgang. We don't know who's going to be participating in pretty deadly Kit Wilson Jeez, and Sam Stoker or whatever they call themselves. Now Elton Prince are probably going to have flash legend ringside. We don't know for sure. <sighs> oh, I forgot about time in mind. <laughs> Tons of fucking people around here. They were they were doing their brawl segment. Uh, Caroline <laughs> was watching, you know, not really watching, but yeah, you know, she's like sitting on the couch with me or whatever. And she looks up from her phone, and about like three seconds later, she puts her head back down and she just says, "Too many people in the ring." <laughs> and I was like, "What?" And she's like, "Too many people. This is this is this is like this is too much. I can't take it." <laughs> whatever. It seems like it could be a little bit of a mess on this match, but I'm all for having all these teams involved. And yeah, I mean, technically speaking, I do think that this is probably just going to be a predictable thing with the Creed brothers winning, but I think that there is a possibility we could see in particular Gallus walking away with these titles. The elimination aspect has it interesting for me because I think that there's a chance we could get that. It's down to the two champions. And then it's just like, okay, well, now we know we're getting the unification that way. I honestly don't think that's going to be how it goes. I think Pretty Deadly is going to be the first out. Then I think Briggs and Jensen are going to be out. And it's all a matter of whether or not Roderick Strong screws it up for the Creed Brothers. Yeah, that's the the big wrinkle in this. And honestly, like the biggest story at the moment that the Creeds are facing is... Seemingly, it's Julius Creed versus Roderick Strong. Mm-hmm. 
is the is the match they're building up to. And that doesn't need to involve the tag team titles, or it could just be a nice little um like get away from that. So you can have Gallus or any one of these other teams hold the NXT tag team titles and just fight some other teams in the meantime while you're dealing with the inner tor- turmoil within Diamond Mine. And then once the Creed Brothers are free of that, they can come back, have a redemption story and reclaim the titles. That could actually be far more interesting than just having the Creeds unify the belts. I think the match will be good. All teams involved can work and it'll be interesting to see what they all put together with so many bodies involved and so many bodies potentially around ringside involved as well. But I think I would actually lean towards Gallus just because I feel like they've been built up to be very strong in the couple of weeks they've been back Mm -hmm. in NXT. Uh, They're the ones that seem the most likely. You're already doing a big storyline or a a side storyline between Brooks Jensen, Josh Josh Briggs and uh, Fallon Henley against Pretty Deadly and Lash Legend. So I don't think why you wouldn't just continue that and just have that as a standard feud, have whoever wins that take on Gallus or whoever for the titles like that can be a, a feud going forward but yeah it's, it's it is between the creeds and Gallus for me and i think it's more interesting to give it to Gallus at this point i think you need to have at least one uk team unify the belt right that's another aspect of this that i think that people are kind of overlooking is uh you know at the end of this we're not going to have these other NXT UK titles anymore. And technically speaking, yeah, it's not the most important thing in the world that like, if you think of the ECW championship, you don't think of Ezekiel Jackson. Most likely you probably think of Tommy dreamer. You probably think of Rob Van Dam, you know, whatever it might be. But technically speaking, if it ends up being Briggs and Jensen are the last NXT UK tag team champions and the Creed brothers retain, and then it's just, okay, that's the end of that. Where do you go from there? The Creed brothers lose the titles down the line and it's still going to be the same. They can lose the titles here and the storyline continues. It's the biggest thing that possibly can happen as the rift for diamond mine. And it's the best way of putting Gallus over as, yeah, these guys actually matter. It's not just that they're popping up on NXT because we want to keep them. We actually want them to be a solid team. Joe coffee is a guy that they've, put a lot of investment in, in particular. He was one of those potentials to win the Heritage Cup, to win the, I mean, Mark Coffey won the Heritage Cup. Joe Coffey could have been a guy to beat Pete Dunne for a little bit there. I could see him being a North American champion at some point. And I could see Gallus being a prominent team that makes perfect sense to be going up against like Idris Sanofi and Malik Blade and going up against Briggs and Jensen separately. Once they go, ah, we lost our NXT UK titles, but, you know, we are going to try to win the NXT UK, uh, the NXT tag titles back or whatever. And Gallus would be ending the NXT UK tag title reign like that. So, you know, you give it back to the, to the UK thing. Puts a lot of the other titles in doubt. If you make this like the first match and the UK people come out on top, suddenly, oh, I don't know, maybe... Maybe Blair Davenport comes away. Maybe Tyler Bate, you know. I think it's the right decision. I'm going to actually not only say Gallus should win, but I'm going to say that they do. I think um, you guys have said it wonderfully. Gallus wins for sure. One, because it's it takes it off the creeds. I think Briggs and Jensen need to be the first team out. I don't get them. I, I, I'm not feeling it. Um... Shawn Michaels loves Gallus. And I think that that's going to go far for them as well. And this is their time. I think they win, and I think that they won't be the only UK people winning a belt either. Hmm. Oh, uh, let's talk about the triple threat match uh, unifying the NXT Women's Championship and the NXT UK Women's Championship. Mandy Rose, Mako Satamora, and Blair Davenport. Do you guys like the stuff on uh, NXT this week where they had the former champions popping up and they were like, I thought it was yeah, like Rhea Ripley saying, okay, Blair Davenport, like, you know, Hey, I'm the one that won both the women's titles. You got a, champ- a chance to do this. Don't fuck it up. And 
uh, Alba Fire with Mako Satamora and Shayna Baszler, you know, threatening Mandy Rose essentially, and all the other ones, you know, they did it with Ciampa and, and so on and so forth. I thought that was pretty cool. I really like that. It, it's it's like, a good way to make a, a show that only has really like two weeks build, make it seem like it's important. Mm-hmm. I thought it was fantastic. The only thing I didn't like was that they started it with Balor, and it sort of felt like, oh, you're you're a heel. What are you doing here? Just being like, yeah, Braun, win the belt. Do it for (laughs) us, man. I thought that was a bit strange. But everything else, fantastic. I did like that the heels tended to be a little bit more like, I'm going to beat your ass if you don't. Like Gunther with Tyler Bate was just sort of like towering over him and just like, I made this belt important ass you know like, <laughs> i also like that finley yeah photo. finley i just hand, handed tyler bait an ipad and was like hey it's yeah. <laughs> and, oh. and he couldn't remember how to talk he's like oh by the way i'm pete dunn <laughs> uh mandy rose mako satamora blair davenport i honestly can see an argument for any of them winning this match as can i i definitely think this is the hardest one to call mako for the Simple choice of a lot of people want to work with Mako, so I don't think she's leaving the States just yet. Mandy, because they're doing great with Mandy. This is the best she's ever been pushed. But I think it's going to be Blair Davenport because I think Blair Davenport can give NXT the new direction it needs without having to have a one-on-one program for Mandy Rose. It is a, a a pretty difficult one to call because if you'd have asked me that this match was taking place a month and a half ago, I'd say Mandy Rose absolutely is going to retain the the uh, NXT title because I'm pretty sure Vince doesn't know who the other two guys t- two women are. So I think that that would be a pretty safe bet. But I think that with Triple H at the helm and his prioritization towards wrestling, Mandy is the least likely one to win. But they have been building her up, and obviously she's been champion for a long time, so it would seem a little odd for her to this to be the situation that she loses the title in. So that's the thing that's keeping me leaning towards Mandy Rose retaining, but there is definitely possibility for either one of them. Mako is a great wrestler, should definitely be, would definitely be an excellent NXT champion, as she has been an excellent NXT UK Women's Champion. So I think that there's no problem with having her win the belt. There's certainly no problem with Blair Davenport winning the title. She's probably the best blend in terms of like wrestling ability and character work that in this match. Mandy is definitely the character and Miko's the wrestling <laughs> least. Yeah, me, yeah, yeah, and, and Blair's the the best mix of both. So, in an ideal world, probably she should be the one holding the title. But I think the likelihood is they're going to have Mandy retain. I think they still have plans. Which I don't. Which now I don't think uh, revolve around um, Nikita Lyons, because I think Triple H won a, a wrestler holding that title. I'm kind of fifty fifty. Uh, no, I wouldn't say fifty fifty. That's not the right math. <laughs> There's three people in here. Uh, I originally had written down on a lot of different things here. Mandy Rose wins when Miko does something to Blair and Mandy does that type of thing where then she just like hits Miko with a, a knee and then steals the pin on Blair. I could definitely see that coming. But the more that I think about it, the more I realize that that prediction kind of becomes moot when I look at like what I was imagining they're going to lead towards. Cause I kept saying for the longest time, Oh, I think that Nikita Lyons is probably going to be the one that beats Mandy Rose they kind of pushed her off to the side a little bit. And I think it's like not a guarantee right now that that happens. They might just be like, okay, look, she is somebody who we are invested in. We like her. She might win the championship, but she's not ready. And I can't think of anybody to beat Mandy Rose at this point in the course of, you know, Halloween Havoc is potentially going to be a pay-per-view and not just a TV show. Maybe they do another one by the end of the year. Maybe we start getting into like next year or whatever. Mandy does need to drop the title to someone. And right now, nobody stands out to me other than Nikita Lyons. And it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. So I'm actually at this point effectively ruling Mandy Rose out. I think that 
if she loses the title here, maybe we get toxic attraction up on the main roster. And maybe that little stint with the tag title tournament thing was just a means to be like, look, you know, a couple weeks, a couple months from now, we're going to bring up all three. And we wanted to sort of whet your appetite for that a little bit. Because Miko can definitely be champion. And it's not like they're going to be like, oh my God, everything falls apart. Blair could definitely be a champion and same kind of deal. But I'm leaning more towards Miko. I think that Blair would be a lot of the same, like, okay, well, Blair is just the heel and, you know, she goes up against the same people. And you know, maybe they can tap into that. Maybe it can still work because you could still do Blair against, like, Alba Fire and you can still do Blair against Roxanne Perez and some of the other people here and there. But Miko being champion opens up all the heels to flood towards that title picture. We could get Miko versus Cora Jade. We could get Miko against somebody like a Tiffany Stratton or, you know, if maybe we get like a, a big boost to somebody like a uh, Ginny popping up or, I mean, she's probably going to be on SmackDown more than anything, but I'm kind of feeling more of the Miko pick. So I'm going to go her and if either of the other two win, I don't think it's going to be like, what? This is crazy. I, I could definitely see an argument for all three. But I'm going to go, gun to my head, I'm going to say Miko. What's your ultimate final pick, guys? Be, I almost called her B Priestley. Uh, Blair Davenport. But I would prefer Miko, but I think Blair. And I'd prefer either the other two, but I'm going to go with Andy <laughs> because I have some involvement with uh, Toxic Attraction because it's an ODQ situation so they could get involved and help mandy get the victory and i'm leaning towards her dropping the title to roxanne perez Hmm. in the future so that's a good build for something that doesn't have a strong strong build to it where three people could possibly win this match and the three people on this podcast are like all right well you know we're all picking separate ones but i think that we're all probably going to agree here braun breaker is definitely beating tyler (laughs) for the NXT UK I, championship going to be folded into the NXT championship. I love Tyler Bate. I think he's fantastic. I think it could be a great match. But like, Ron Breaker has been the most maybe well polished NXT 2.0 superstar, but the most boring to discuss on a podcast because it keeps going back to, eh, Ron wins. That's all I really have to say about this. He's going to win. Yeah, I've, yeah, but Rob Blake is definitely going to retire. Well, retain his title and win the NXT UK one. I don't think there's any question in anybody's mind about that. But this is the match that I'm most looking forward to because Tyler Bate is one of my favorite people to watch when he's put into a big match situation. And so I'm very much looking forward to seeing what he can do with Bron Baker. I think it's going to be infinitely more entertaining than pretty much any of the matches that Braun Breaker's had as NXT champion so far because his stuff with Jordan Devlin was boring, his stuff with Joe Gacy was boring, his stuff with Cameron Grimes was probably was better but still left me a little bit cold. So hopefully this spotlight and the fact that he is working with a really, really excellent worker is going to elevate him up even further. So, but yeah, there, is, there isn't a question of doubt in my mind that he's going to unify the belts here. I've said before. Breaker really reminds me of. Okay. Hey, go ahead. I was gonna say Breaker really reminds me of Goldberg, like in the way that he carries himself, in the way that he speaks, everything about him just feels like you're just Goldberg for a younger generation, and nobody's had that great match with him yet. So I agree with Callum. Hopefully, this is it. I've said before that I think that Tyler Bate versus Braun Breaker has the potential to be the best match of the night. But at the same time, I also think that I'm going to have to turn my brain off for a portion of it because I just, the two of them standing next to each other. My big issue with Tyler Bate is frequently I have to be having a higher level of suspension of disbelief for me to buy into that. His moves are like impacting the bigger guy as much. And 
yeah, it's worked perfectly fine for other people in the past. Like Rey Mysterio wins matches against people that he's bigger than all the time. But I don't think if Tyler Bate would walk out here champion that I would be particularly happy about it. And that's not to say that I dislike bait, but I feel like that would be a mistake. If you have breaker lose in this scenario, then I'm wondering what he really does going forward. Cause he is kind of bland. And if he's not champion, I don't really know what I'm invested in. <laughs> Tyler bait. He doesn't have the most personality, but I think he can bounce back better than Braun breaker bait ending this with the UK title that way how he had started it. That's a good enough cap off for that as it needs to be for my uh, taste and just losing to breaker and having a handshake at the end. I think that's probably the best way to go. So breaker can cut a promo afterward on XT and be like, you know what? Uh, Tyler bait took me to the limit and I got all the respect for the world for him. He's going to do some great stuff here. I'm looking forward to fighting him again in the future. And then Bate can be maybe a really good option for the North American title. Tyler Bate versus Carmelo Hayes. Apologies about the fire truck stuff in the background. Sorry, everybody. Uh, I think Bate versus Carmelo Hayes could be where we see maybe Bate wins that title. And that could be a better way of doing that. But I'm thinking Breaker for sure. We're all going Breaker. And uh, I'm looking forward to this pay-per-view. This is going to be shorter. It's going to be like a change of pace a little bit from what we see. And it, it matters. Titles being unified. We can get brand new champions. This is fun. It's pretty cool. So any other last thoughts yeah, uh, yeah. you guys got for Worlds Collide? Uh, this should pro- I think that this is shaping up to be the best show that NXT had put on since the rebranding to NXT 2.0. So hopefully it does deliver on that uh, expectation. But yeah, I, I don't have a problem with any of the matches they've lined out, uh, laid out for this one. So hopefully it's a good show. Yeah, I agree with that. I think this should be a fantastic show. It should have bits and pieces of the feeling of old takeovers. And it should start what will be a wrestling packed Sunday on a really, really good note. Hopefully that is the case. We will let you know what we think after the pay-per-view or at least somewhat after kind of during whatever that happens with the post show, but we've got clash at the castle before that takes place. That's tomorrow night. Technically we have SmackDown tonight and rampage tonight. And I mean, for anybody who's watching level up, but um, we will be seeing you next with that clash, the castle post show. Then we get to worlds collide. Then we get to wall out and wrap everything up and potentially next week come back around to this again and do that fantasy booking the all-time ultimate nxt uk pay-per-view card we might do something else we might switch that up and do something similar but you know on the different kind of path i don't know yet we haven't quite figured it out yet but you know you'll figure that out when it comes around to it and in the meantime if you want to make sure that you are subscribed to us and you follow us on facebook and twitter and you just check out smartoutmoment.com any updates to these pay-per-view cards or anything else that's happening, you will find them there. Also on facebook.com slash group slash the mega maniacs. We'll have our live threads for discussion during the pay-per-views. If you want to chat it up there, super chats are going to be available during the post shows, plenty of ways for you to express your opinions, including the comments below. So tell us what you think, tell us your predictions, tell us your thoughts on the hot tags and anything else. And if you want to continue following everything else that's happening under a mango tree, go to a mango tree.com follow what I am doing separately, just on my own personal accounts at Tony mango for random tweets every once in a while or other thoughts during shows and follow what these guys are up to as well. Rob. Yeah. You can follow me everywhere at dude Felice, including Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. Check out all my great work over at fightful. Check out Fightful Select. Check out WrestleZone. Check out any of the interviews I've been doing with Dom Smith and Tom Talks Rubbish. And just keep supporting. And thank you guys all the time for supporting. And check out Callum stuff. You'll find me on Twitter at Wigmeister14. And you should always be checking out the stuff that's going out on the Smart Car Moment website. But make it a beeline towards the power rankings, my week-to-week contribution 
coming out every single Saturday on the website, so check that out there. And you can also follow the Fantasy League there as well, as well as on www.fantasyleague.com, where you can find the latest standings, who's been picking up points every single episode of Raw, SmackDown, NXT, and there will definitely be plenty of points picked up at the Clash of the Castle pay-per-view, where we'll also find out who wins the prediction contest and who gets to elevate their team or diminish one of their opponent's teams as a result of those predictions. So stay tuned for all that stuff. Oh, is NXT Worlds Collide factoring in in the same kind of way? Are we doing no. uh, predictions for that? Like, uh, Nope. Nope. Just for the points? Doesn't matter enough. Yep, yeah, doesn't matter enough. Yeah, yeah, it will definitely uh, count to it. It will, it will carry the same level of points as a pay per view event will. So you can look forward to that. But then again, most of the people actually on this card we don't have in our fantasy teams anyway because most of them are NXT UK people or NXT yeah, UK right. people when we are drafted. <laughs> That's true. I didn't think about that. All right. So uh, we got all that stuff coming your, your way. Hopefully, you've been enjoying this overloaded week of pay per view content and everything. But we will continue on with the rest of them. Clash of the Castle coming up tomorrow night, everybody. Hopefully you enjoy it, and we will talk to you then. But for now, this has been another Smart Out moment, and we are being counted out.